Hello, and welcome back to the Simplifiers podcast, where we take topics in work and in life and simplify them. And friends, I have absolutely loved all the conversations that we have had this month, really centered around the the central theme of radiance, becoming a vibrant person, making choices, taking leaps, doing big things out in the world that helps you shine as bright as possible. And I felt like today's conversation is really kind of bringing us all back to home and bringing us back to center on that so we can take a deep dive into specifically how to shine bright and reclaim your radiance, especially if you've been feeling like your little light is a little bit dim these days. So my special guest today, her name is Sarah Hagstrom, and she's determined to make the world a healthier and happier place. She's devoted to help growing health coaching businesses all around the world with healthy bottom lines by establishing strong foundations from the start. She specifically works with and empowers health coaches to embrace their passion, do the work, show up for themselves and their clients, and own their success. So I'd like to welcome to the Simplifiers podcast, Sarah Hagstrom. Hey, Sarah. Hi, Mary. Thanks for having me. I am thrilled you're here. And I just love, love, love this topic because it has been a beautiful and juicy month for me to like have Mm. these big conversations about radiance. Mm. So before we like dive in, I want to just hear what your take is. Like, how do you define radiance in your own life? Mm, yeah. To me, when I think about radiance, I think about love. I think about glowing. I think about um, being in the flow, right? I think about sunlight and the beach mm-hmm. um, and just living your purpose, living with a lot of love and not a lot of fear. Yeah. And you know, a lot of our listeners um, are really liking what we're doing this season. So the first Tuesday of every month, I record a guided visualization exercise that is I all love. Yes. And it's all about like centraled on the theme. So it kicks us off into the right oh. mood. And so this month's guided visualization, how to be a vibrant person, leads you through this um, imagination space of taking a magic shower outdoors Mm. and and feeling your radiance, your glow shine, not only in your body, but how do you move that radiance to cover your neighborhood, your city, and then the entire planet as well. Mm, That's so good. I love that. I'm a a, a big fan. I was going to say, you know, talking about this, I would be surprised if meditation didn't come up, but visualization, I love that too. I feel like that just takes it a little bit deeper. I personally like a visualization a little bit more than a meditation, like a meditation Mm -hmm. that helps me visualize something. I'm like, yeah. Mm -hmm. And expands your your brain to Mm -hmm. play and and Mm -hmm. also expands your brain to, I don't know, give yourself permission to kind of tap into that deep inner knowing, your intuition that, that knows so much. And it's just begging for you to like ask her, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. The body, the body knows when you can tap into that. It's very powerful. Mm-hmm. And equally, sometimes, most times, our childhoods don't quite go like we think they're going to go. And some deep rooted anchors in our identity or what have you get dropped down when you're just a little kid. So... Mm. Sarah, I've heard a bit about your your story and, and, and your childhood, but I'd love for you to share um, that with our audience. How, tell us about your childhood and how that affected your health as an adult. Yeah, I'd love to. So I grew up um, with a courageous mother who had me at 19, mm-hmm. which when I think about that, like I'm not a mom, I'm 34 right now. But when I think about raising a child at 19, I am just blown away by the courage and the strength that she has shown. Because like, oh, God knows that, you know, taking care of myself at 34, my husband is a lot, but taking care of a child, it's next level. So 
she had me when she was really young and both of my parents struggle with addiction. And so I grew up in a very dysfunctional, violent home. There was also a lot of love, you know, as I get older, I, I realize that we can have both, you know, I, I have so much love for my mom, but I also have this inner child um, that I've had to work on so much because she didn't get the love that she needed. She didn't get the attention that she needed. And while my mom did the best she could, you know, I have a lot of trauma that I've been working through. And that is essentially what led me to health coaching um, and really like my own health struggles, you know? So yeah, I grew up in um, a pretty violent home and I was pretty much raising myself, you know, from a very young age. Um, my mom worked full time. Uh, my parents got divorced. And so I just like my earliest childhood memories, you know, are, and I just feel for my inner child because they're of me, you know, waking up crying in the middle of the night at like three years old, being mm. all alone. Yeah. Right. And so, so yeah, like as I've gotten older, what's happened is I didn't process a lot of that. And so I don't know if you've read the book. There's this book and it's called The Body Keeps Score. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And so, so he, I feel like that title is just so powerful um, because what, what I noticed was after I, I moved out at 18 and I started having digestive issues, right? And it's funny because as a kid, I was sick a lot. And, mm -hmm. you know, I, when I, first found health coaching, I was like, oh, I was sick because I was eating fast. We didn't have a lot of money. I was eating yeah. fast food. I was eating, you know, processed foods, which I definitely think that that wasn't helping. But more so what I believe is the emotions and the trauma in the body cause more sickness and disease than the food. I think that stored emotions, unprocessed trauma yeah. is so powerful. Um, if we don't feel those, like, the body's going to start talking. And so, so yeah, I, it started for me with, um, digestive issues. I had a lot of digestive issues when I was in college, kept me from going to class, from working. Mm. Um, and that just kind of led me down this path of, um, self-discovery and processing this trauma, um, over and over again, right? And mm -hmm. reparenting my inner child and continuing to do the work because as soon as I think, you know, okay, I got it something else pops up and allows me to go a little bit deeper. And, you know, tying it in with the the theme of this month is as I do this, as I unpack this, as I peel the onion layers, I do notice a, a, a more radiant persona inside of myself. Um, I notice that I shine a little bit brighter. I connect with myself a little bit deeper and I'm able to have so much stronger relationships because of it. So yeah. as as painful as it can be, right? If anybody is listening and they have this trauma or um, have had a rough childhood or or in chronic pain, um, I definitely wouldn't trade it for anything because it's allowed me to reconnect to who I really am. Mm. And I, I'm so grateful for you to share that because I'm sure there are a lot of people out there. You know, I, I, I can't think of anyone that I know in my circle of friends or family that haven't had sort of a rough childhood here or there. Yeah. It's not perfect. We always think that everybody else has got it all figured out and we're the ones that are a mess. No, no. I think it's all of us <laughs> to a certain extent, right? And, I, and I'm so glad because, honestly, when I was growing up, I remember watching um, Seventh Heaven. I don't know if you watched mm -hmm. I, I, I remember watching that and I was like, this family is perfect. Like, yeah. my family is a mess and yeah. this family is perfect. And, you know, a lot of people kind of poo-poo on social media. But one thing that I love about it is seeing all of these different stories and these people sharing, you know, hey, I had this or this happened to me. And I feel so seen when other people share their stories. I'm like, oh my gosh, that was me too. You yeah. know, and like you're saying, it's more common than than I had ever realized. And I can imagine, I mean, if you had suffered uh, from chronic pain and digestive issues for years and years, maybe even a decade or two, right? At some point, you probably go, well, this is just how my body works. My body's mm -hmm. broken and it just, there's no fixing it. There's no getting better. This is it. But what you found was just the opposite, right? Tell us more. Yeah. So for me, I, you know, like I was saying, the, the, the positives and the negatives with growing up in my home was 
although my parents, you know, weren't around as much as I would have liked them to be, my mom was so great at telling me, Hey, you can do anything you believe in, Mm -hmm. you know? And so it was interesting because I would see something different than I would hear. And so I definitely growing up have had a lot of work around trust, Mm -hmm. like trusting people, right. And like, is this person going to do what they say they're going to do? And so for me with the chronic pain and digestive issues, and we can talk more about like what specifically that looked like for me, but I think the reason that I was able to find solutions and work through it is because I grew up kind of with this in my head that like, hey, I can figure it out. Hey, you are strong. You are healthy. You are Mm -hmm. capable. And one thing that my mom has always wanted for me is like a better life. Like, hey, go do it. You can do this. If you set your mind to it, you can do this, which um, again, super grateful for that. It also comes with you know, uh, me then becoming a workaholic, right. And like tying my worth to, um, how, how successful I am in business. So Mm -hmm. it's like, for me, I kind of tend to go from one extreme to the next, but, um, but yeah, I definitely think that, um, me having faith and believing that my body can heal comes from these positive affirmations that I was told as a kid. Um, and then luckily too, um, I was really interested in health. For me, I remember when I was struggling with digestive issues, that's when blogging was really taking off. It was around, uh, I think like 2006, 2008, 2009. Mm -hmm. Um, And so there was a lot of these food bloggers. And Mm -hmm. so I would read blogs in the morning before school and they would be sharing, hey, I'm doing a green smoothie. And I was like, oh, maybe I should do that instead of eggs, you know, and just trying these different things. And it it worked for me, you know, for me, I, I think we talked about this, um, off air, but I follow a plant-based diet Mm -hmm. and that was really huge for me. I had no idea, um, growing up, like I was saying, I was raised on processed foods. Um, when I was sick, I remember my mom would get McDonald's, you know, she's like, I gotta go, but like, here's a happy meal. And so, um, I didn't have a lot of whole foods in my diet. And so when I learned about plant-based diet, I was like, wow, this is amazing, you know, and it, it did make a really big difference. And I've been following that, you know, since 2010. That's brilliant. And, you know, I think that that's the bottom line is you have to really tap in. First step is acknowledging what's going on in your body, in your spirit as well. Because I think radiance is the mind, body, spirit. It's not just the physical. It's not just your soul. It's not just your brain. That's for sure. You know, it's it's those three things working in uh, harmony that helps it to shine bright, helps you to shine bright. And one thing that you ha- talk about is like something, a concept called like pruning for progress. What do you mean by that when you say mm-hmm. prune for progress to actually help you reclaim your radiance? Yeah. So what I mean by that is removing all of the unnecessary tasks and things that you think that you need to do mm-hmm. and focusing on the things that bring you joy, yeah. that that bring you value. You know what I mean? Um I think with business, there are all these things we think we should do. And I mean, even with life too. And so it's really easy to get into this hamster wheel of, um, I need to do more to be radiant physically, Mm -hmm. mentally. More, 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 more. Exactly. And so for me, I really realized me and my husband, Peter, we have this saying that's try easier, right? Mm-hmm. It's like, instead of trying harder, how can we try easier? How, what's the the path of least resistance? How can we remove all of the unnecessary things in our lives so that we can focus on the things that bring us joy yeah. and true happiness? Um, and so I really liked a few years ago, like the minimalism, um, kind of like phenomenon where everybody was like downsizing and getting rid of things. And I think that um, that's so powerful because definitely in America, we can be over consumers, right? And like try to do more of everything and bigger is better. And mm-hmm. I just feel like it just, honestly, it's the opposite of radiant. It, it, weigh, it weighs me down personally. It feels very heavy. And I think it's really hard to be radiant when you're weighed down. A hundred thousand percent. I mean, I think yeah. anyone that's listening to the Simplifiers podcast is also <laughs> on that same wavelength of like, hmm, maybe doing less is a better idea. Maybe distilling down to what's most, most, most important you don't need the 4,000 square foot house full of knickknacks and nonsense. Like you, you actually live a richer life when you can focus on what's most important. I love the idea of prune for progress because, um, 
a uh, quick story. Over the spring and summer this year, I really got into gardening. And let's just be very clear. I am not good at it. <laughs> I'm so a beginner. I got so excited when two cherry tomatoes came out of the ground and I could actually eat them. Just two. That's not a big deal, but it's quite a triumph, let's just say. That's um, interesting. <laughs> and so, you know, what I learned in growing cherry tomatoes is you do have to prune it back, you know, in order for the strongest vines and, and, and shoots to grow and flourish. You can't have these massive plants that are sucking up all the water. You really have to prune to the ones that are the very best. Is, is that what you mean here? A hundred percent. A hundred percent. I find that too with, with business, I got so like in my launch calendars and my team and everything we have to do. Right. And it's just like always like doing the same thing as in, um, recently I struggled with some chronic back pain and it really forced me to slow down. And I could see all of these things we're spending time on that everybody's like, why, why, when we sit down and we talk about it, it's like, why are we doing these yeah. tasks? Yeah. Right. And it's like, we're not getting the results we want with them. We've always been doing them just because you've always been doing them doesn't mean that you should continue doing them. And so, yeah, exact. That's exactly what I mean. Get rid of the stuff that's weighing you down. That's not allowing you to have mm -hmm. the radiance in your life, the relationships in your life, the business growth in your life. Right. Um, I think that making space is so powerful. It's sl slowing down to see what's going on, take an inventory of what is happening in your life and in your business. Um, it's really powerful. Mm -hmm. And that reminds me of an episode we had a couple of seasons back with um, author Kate Northrup. She talked about do mm -hmm. less. And mm. uh, she specifically related it to regenerative farming, like the practices mm. of farmers and how they – you know, you just genuinely need to let your crops rest sometimes, your mm. fields rest. And sometimes we forget that piece of the pie. Like, I, I think, especially in America, and I, I've lived overseas in England, and it's, it's slightly different, but here there is this necessity, an incessant push to go, 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 produce, produce, produce. And that's not always healthy, not, certainly not for your body and your spirit, right? Yeah, I think that's why we're seeing, at least in the health industry, we're seeing so many people who are burnt out mm -hmm. from the overworking and no breaks, right? Um, and we're seeing that people don't even know how to relax yeah. because of social media and always having to be on. Um, I know even for myself, when I go on vacation, I need a good chunk of time because the first few days I'm still like thinking about work and yeah. my to-do list. It takes a few days for me to totally relax and release. Mm -hmm. Yes, 100%. And our, our central nervous system just needs to get back to center, right? Mm -hmm. It's like it's, it's so on high alert for so long. You know, something that you talk about that I'm just so fascinated about, and I really want you to dive deep, is this uh, concept that when we realize that nothing is good or bad or mm -hmm. right or wrong in life, like how does that reframe, really help us to shine brighter. Tell tell mm. me more. Yeah, I think about that in terms of, again, being weighed down. Mm. And I think when we um, have a right or wrong, it's judgment, good mm -hmm. versus bad. We, we end up in this place of judging things. If she's right, I'm wrong, right? If I don't do this, I'm bad. Um, and what happens when we have judgment, again, is we feel this heaviness. We feel this pressure. And I, again, I think that radiance has to do with being light, right? And um, being connected to source. And so I'm really personally trying not to, to judge things and kind of tying it back to like chronic pain. A few weeks ago, I was just really having, I was having this hard time. I was in this spiral of, um, I used to be able to do this yoga pose and mm -hmm. I can't do it now. I mm -hmm. used to be able to walk to this pond down the street that I love and it brings me so much joy, but right now I can't do that. And so it would be like, I have this pain, which is causing me discomfort. And then what's causing me frustration and more suffering is this story of what I used to be able to do, this mm. judgment on myself, right? Mm. That's causing me way more. And so I had this moment where I was like, what if I just release the frustration 
Who would I be? How would I feel? What if I just had this discomfort? I would feel a lot better if I could step into that place, right? And so I think if we can just be with what is and have mm -hmm. acceptance and awareness rather than judging something, it allows us to flow through life with a lot less suffering and discomfort. I I agree. And when it when the emotions and feelings are flaring up in high alert, it's so hard to to like zoom yourself out of it. You're like in it, right? You know, and, and you feel like, oh my God, I'm so overwhelmed or oh my God, I feel so helpless and hopeless. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. really hard to pluck yourself up and out of that situation. And that's where things start to spiral out of control. So how do you get that awareness and pull yourself out of it to see the greater perspective of what's happening? Yeah. So that was after a few weeks of being in the spiral, mm -hmm. <laughs> like the, the hope, you know, it's not like I felt, I felt you know, oh, I want to be able to do this yoga pose and I can't. And then it's like, oh, but let me just drop this. And you know, like hundred yeah. percent. It's like that, that I had to say, I didn't have to, but sometimes I feel like our ego wants us to, to use time in order to, to move past it. Right. It's like, we, we know better than being in the discomfort and mm -hmm. like the suffering and the story, but it's like, we just want to sit in it for a little bit longer. Um, for me, what I've found are a few things. Um, in order to move out of this place of, you know, feeling hopeless and just really down on myself, if, I, if I'm in a bad mood, I was yesterday, last night, I was yeah. overworked, I was feeling tired, yeah. um, it's the end of the night. And I know that in order to shift, I need to either uh, listen to something. So I need to shift through sound, mm -hmm. meditation, visualization, music, I need to shift by moving my body. Yes. So, right, like going for a walk, dancing. Uh, Peter and I have a ping pong table set up in our dining room. So like playing a game of ping pong, like anything to just move my body. Um, or water. Water is also really powerful. So like a shower um, or going for a swim in the ocean. And so those, if I can get myself to do one of those things, then I notice a complete shift. My, my mindset is shifted and I'm feeling more capable. I'm feeling better about myself. Um, I don't want to discard either like the importance of feeling those emotions also, yes. because I think that it's this, it's, it's both. It's, we need to feel the frustration if we're frustrated. Like I said, I was frustrated for a few weeks. I journaled about it. There's this practice called um, journal speak. And I talk about mm -hmm. it in uh, the high vibe toolkit. And it's, are you familiar with it, Mary? Mm -mm, no, what's okay. this? It's, pr it's pretty cool. It's, it was created by um, Nicole Sachs and she has a podcast. It's called the cure for chronic pain. Mm -hmm. And um, pretty much what you do is you make three lists. So you make a list about uh, childhood stresses Anything that stressed you out during childhood, any memories you have, being bullied, parents, anything, right? And then you make a list of um, current stressors, anything that's stressing you out currently in your life. Mm -hmm. And then you make a list of personality traits. Mm -hmm. um, and what you do is each day you just pick one and you set a timer for 20 minutes and you journal like unfiltered things that you would never say and you just let it all out on the page for 20 minutes mm. kind of reminds me of like the artist way just like mm -hmm. freestyle writing right and then at the end rip it up burn it and then do like a self-love meditation send out self-love and what I like about this practice is it allows you if I'm feeling really frustrated I can write about it rip it up you know, meditate, which then shifts my state out of that place of frustration or anger or sadness, whatever it is. Um, and that's really powerful too. And, you know, I, I'm so grateful that you mentioned this. And by the way, everything we talk about in today's episode, we'll find in the show notes over at the simplifierspodcast.com. But the key word of what you said in all of that is shift. Because I think, and this has come up in other conversations this month, Matthew Dix, Dr. Gary Chapman, they all talked about this, is if you sit in it for too long and do nothing, you or deny it, right, numb and uh, avoid, then it just gets worse. The chronic yeah. pain, the chronic emotions and the tidal wave inside you, it, it, it explodes after a while. But mm -hmm. the secret is to acknowledge it to process it, to get sit in it and 
move it, shift it to, you know, in those ways, right? Yeah. And and it's a balance because everybody's so different. Mm. And for me, like before dealing with chronic pain, my learned pattern was to shift quick. Mm. The quicker I can shift, the better. And that's not always true because sometimes sitting in it allows you to pull another layer that you didn't even realize. What I've found is sometimes I think that I'm angry about something, but if I keep going, there's actually some deep sadness within that I, if I would have just, oh, I'm mad, you know, let me yell into my pillow, then I would have missed this deeper emotion. And so having, having time to meditate, you know, to rest, to just sit with things and and connecting with yourself so you can realize you know what is your learned habit learned pattern and is that supporting you because some of us kind of shift quickly some of us kind of sit in it maybe longer than we need to and so figuring that out and everybody's mm. so different yeah well it really resonates with me i know the music moving my body and getting in water or even simply drinking more water mm. The, all three of those are, are solid solutions, and they do help me to shift when I'm in a grumpy mood or when I'm really sad or overwhelmed. Mm-hmm. I mean, those three things do. And one of my secrets, I know I've talked about it quite a bit on the podcast lately, is it's is also ecstatic dance. Um, mm. There's a really powerful, incredible community um, in Dallas, Texas. Again, links are in the show notes. Mm for ecstatic dance. And that's just simply moving your body, dancing in a safe space. It's a sober dance party. And there are no choreographed dance moves. You're just moving through the big emotions that are coming up. It's beautiful. I love that you said that, Mary. I actually did dance this morning. I love it. And I I normally don't because I'm very in my head and working on always connecting with my body. And I was like, oh, this will be perfect for Mm -hmm. connecting with my body. And it was great. Yeah. So I also imagine, let's shift gears a little, um, for those that are listening out there that are feeling like their light is a little bit dimmer right now because they're, you know, helping and doing all the things for all their people all around them. How do we put an end to people-pleasing tendencies and, and really truly focus on doing the things that truly light us up? Can you give us some thoughts there? Yeah, what's what's really interesting is Probably this past year, I realized that I was a people pleaser and I would have never described myself as that because I grew up as an only child. I'm very driven. I'm a Taurus. I'm a manifester in human design, if you know about human Mm -hmm. design. And so, you know, um, most people probably wouldn't consider me a people pleaser. But what I noticed, and I think a lot of it comes from my childhood, is when I would go to an event, say like a dinner party or something, I naturally would scan the room. If I'm in a conversation, Mm -hmm. I'm looking at facial expressions. You know, is she smiling? Does she like what I'm saying? Is she mad at me? You know, all of these, these things, you know, I want to make them happy. Does she need something? Does my husband need something? Let me go get him food. And for me, what I realized was it, is keeping me, people pleasing is keeping me from having meaningful relationships. Yes. Last year, I was like, I want more support in my life. I want more friends in my life. And last year was a time where I had hired more support in my business and was meeting more people. And yet I still felt like I didn't have these strong connections. And as soon as I realized this pretty recently, you know, hey, you aren't allowing people to get to know you because you're so focused on them and everything that they're saying and they're wanting. And so for me, you know, one thing that clicked in terms of stopping people pleasing was I want meaningful, deep relationships. And when I'm people pleasing, I'm I'm not getting those. Yeah. And for me, the relationships are more important than being liked. I don't want to be liked, right? I want, I want depth. I want realness. I want meaning. And so shifting out of it, you know, it's a process, but I think awareness and paying attention to what are you missing out on because of people pleasing? And is that worth it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and people pleasing, you know, when done to an extreme could potentially talking about that onion, peeling it back. What's the motivation underneath is performative to be liked, Mm -hmm. to be accepted, Mm -hmm. 
um, mm-hmm. you know, to feel like you belong in a, in a community or, or a place. But like, as you say, I mean, I think that people want to see the true you and that meaningful connection is, is not um, over delivering or, you know, uh, trying to like put yourself aside and, and putting everybody else because that's in essence enabling, isn't it? Like <laughs> that's not well, healthy. And, <laughs> and then how, how are they going to like you if they don't even know you? Exactly. Like, you want them to like you, but you're not giving them a chance to get to know the real you and what you've been through. And I can tell you like, going through probably like the roughest year of my life, like having people who actually know me and I can show up, you know, as my true self in that moment, it's everything. It's, Mm -hmm. it's so powerful. And so again, like if you are people pleasing, I would think about, you know, what's at stake here? What's the cost? Do people really know you for who you are? Um, And that, that can be a scary thing too, right? Cause it's like all of these fears come up about being seen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. And so we, we, I think all of us intellectually understand the why, right? That Let's talk about the how. Like, how do people push past people pleasing as a tendency? Because I think a lot of times it's subconscious. It's like a, it's like an unconscious uh, action that you create that you're just not even aware of. That's a trigger. Mm-hmm. Give yeah. us some practical ideas. Yeah, I mean, I do think that if you can quiet the mind and go within, like I'm saying, the the body will tell you, right? Mm -hmm. So if you are people pleasing and putting yourself last, if I was you, I would set some time aside and I would just close your eyes and tap in, right? Tap into to yourself. Hey body, like what is going on? Where where am I holding tension? Like, is this coming from people pleasing? Um you know, and and really just going within because I think a lot of times we're like, okay, give me this action item. You know, okay, mm-hmm. say no to Susan. You know, um, and I and I can I can give you examples like you know one really easy thing is before you commit to something, take a pause. Yeah. You know, take a pause. Um, say you if you're like in a conversation, you can say, hey, let me check my calendar and get back to you before just saying like, oh, that sounds great. I'd love to do that. Um, and then you know you can ask yourself am I doing this out of fear, right? Mm -hmm. Fear of being abandoned, fear of, um, you know, judgment, you know, fear of missing out, or am I doing this because I love it, because I love hanging out with Susan, because I love how moving my body makes me feel, right? And I really believe you can't go wrong if you tap into the love, right, rather than the fear. If you make choices based on love for yourself, for others, for the planet versus this fear. Mm. Um, but but I, but I do believe that if we can just get quiet, like we have this internal system that will tell us, hey, you got to stop people pleasing. It's showing up in back pain. It's showing up in um, feeling overwhelmed, crying, not being able to sleep, like if we can just get quiet and tune into ourselves, like the body will tell us what we need to do. Mm, I love that so much. And and I think that if any of you guys out there that are listening right now are, are feeling that and going, yeah, that sounds great, but I don't have time for that, right? You do. Like it, it, it the simplest ways of tapping into your your body wisdom and and slowing down is three intentional breaths. We all have time for three belly filling intentional breaths to kind of get back to center what that takes like two minutes i mean we all have it like literally if you have like very small children at home tagging at you and just like you have lots of deadlines on your google calendar all the things you can literally just lock yourself in the bathroom for two minutes (laughs) like we all can do that and and just get back to center i I think sometimes we overcomplicate it in our head and go well i don't have time for that so i just gotta push through. I've got to power through because this is a really tough day, week, month, year, right? And yeah. we bypass. Yeah. And I've I've been there. I get it. And gosh, the thing is, is if we don't make time for it, the body will make us make time for it. Yes. Yeah. I am. I'm living proof of that for me. Like, I, my old pattern was just like deadlines and work and everything is life and death. Everything is so important, right? Mm. And my body was like, mm, you're going to have to take a break, girlfriend. And so I'm like, I'm not. I'm like, I'll just push through it. I had COVID and I'm like doing a three-hour coaching call. You know, I'm like, I can do it. And then finally, you know, 
I went on a trip. Um, well, I tried to go on a trip in March and I'm on the plane and we have a layover and my back is screaming at me mm-hmm. and my leg is screaming at me. And we get off the plane and I tell my husband, we can't go to Miami. Mm-hmm. Like I, if we do not go home, I'm going to end up in the hospital. Yeah. And it was from that mindset of everything's really important. I don't have time for meditation. You know, I my work is everything. It's who I am. If I don't have my work, who am I, right? Mm-hmm. Which is such BS. It's a lie. Um, yeah. It's a lie. It's a total lie. And again, like what I found is I'm so much happier now, even going through the most difficult times, taking this time to, to breathe and connect to myself and do less. And I'm having more success because of it. I think I had this fear and I think a lot of people do that. If I don't reach this deadline, whatever the goal is, it's not going to happen. People are going to drop me. This is going to happen. But the truth is so many of us are wanting to slow down and relax. And if we all come together and and be really honest, you know, if you need to cancel an appointment because you're stressed out and overworked, say that, be human. Then you would be so surprised how somebody else then says, oh yeah, I'm glad you did that because I need that time too, right? Mm-hmm. When, we, when we just open up, like everything can shift for us. Mm. And, and thank you so much for saying that because I feel My own personal life, since the beginning of this year, I have also had a big shift as well. And, you know, what Mm -hmm. I think is funny is uh, this year, you know, people really focus on like, you should just eat less and exercise more and then you'll hit all of your health goals, right? (gasps) But it is so much more than that. And sleep is important. Reducing stress is important. Increasing fun and joy is incredibly important. And so all of this year, the last seven months, that has literally been the secret to my radiance and my vibrancy growing and exponentially is I have not changed anything about how I've, mm-hmm. I'm eating. I've not changed mm-hmm. anything about how mm-hmm. I, much I'm exercising. What I actually changed was adding more fun, fun to my life, mm-hmm. um, really tapping into joy, um, meeting people, going on adventures, and all of a sudden, my skin is brighter. I've dropped 20 pounds. I mm. sleep better at night. And it's like, we don't talk about the fun. Like the fun mm. is a critical part mm-hmm. of like really tapping into your inner radiance, right? Yeah. And I think that if we do more inner child work, which I yes. don't know, you know, how much you've talked about this on on the podcast, but um, if again, get, if you get quiet and visualize your inner child and just let her or him or they speak to you, you would be surprised most of the time they want to have fun. The Mm -hmm. thing they say is like, will you play with me? Can we do something fun? You know what I mean? Yeah. And and that's it. You have to prioritize your time, your schedule, your life, and you have to communicate that with your key people, whether it's your spouse, your partner, your coworkers, your kids, or, you know, people that you share your rooms, like roommates and things, right? You have to communicate what your needs are. So that you can make those thousand daily choices, as I say, Mm -hmm. that lead you to that path of joy, to lead you to doing things that light you up, right? Because that's it. It's in the micro moments. It's not necessarily the big sweeping moments that we think it is, right? Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I agree. We're, We're so powerful. I think we have, you know, a lot of limiting beliefs around what we see other people doing with social media. And so we think, oh, in order to have happiness and success, I need to do this. And this is the only way. But again, like that, that practicing non-judgment, right. And really opening up to infinite possibilities. um, I I think it's super powerful if you can surround yourself with people who are doing things that you didn't think were possible. If you can um, watch documentaries or movies or films to really expand your mind, because I think that we've had so many people tell us, oh, we don't have time for that. We're too busy. We can't do this. And so then we start to believe that, oh, I only have this many hours in the day. I can't do that. Um, When in reality, you know, it's not true. Just like a tangent, I um, belong to the streaming service Gaia. Have you, Mm -hmm. are you familiar with it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's great. It's amazing. And I was watching one last night and this is probably going to sound very crazy to a lot of people it did to me and my husband but there was this guy on there talking about how 
there are people in the world who actually don't eat. Mm. They don't eat and they're able to sustain themselves through light and energy. And I was just like, what? you know, like as a foodie, <laughs> yeah. like I'm not getting, I'm not, I'm not giving up food. I love yeah. food, but it's just seeing that it expands my mind. I'm not, I'm no longer thinking, you know, Hey, if I miss a meal, you know, or, um, don't eat great. Like I'm going to be okay. Cause there's people who are not eating these people. I haven't ate for like six months that he was showcasing, you it's know, crazy. and they're, they're, yeah. they're glowing, they're radiant, they're doing great. And so just, you know, expanding your mind, questioning things. If you're like, Oh, I have no time. I can't do this. You know, just ask yourself, like, is that true? Is that a hundred percent true? Right. Yes. And I think what I hear in that, though, I don't think I should be condoning anybody to not eat for sure. Talk to your healthcare professional, <laughs> right? Uh, that's a disclaimer. Oh my gosh. But I think what I hear in that is, uh, you know, just having that open mind to not accept things at, at face value. Just like we were talking about at the beginning of the episode, not sitting there going, well, I've always had digestive issues, so it's never going to get better. So I'm going to do nothing to explore, expand my brain and knowledge or try something different, right? What we're saying here is to, when you expand your knowledge, you read books, you talk to people, you ask questions and ask your healthcare providers, your health coaches, your nutritionists, whoever you are gaining wisdom from you know, if there are alternative methods out there or other things that are on the horizon that are, uh, you know, a little bit more cutting edge, um, that may help sustain and, and you know, en enhance your life, right? Yeah, 100%. And I, I feel if anyone's listening and they're like, I've tried so many things, the list of things that I have tried on my journey, oh man, it is long, it mm -hmm. is expensive, and it it weighs on you. It weighs you down. Mm -hmm. um, and it's really easy to lose hope and feel like this is just the way that it is, right? And so mm -hmm. for anyone listening, going through that, I feel for you because I've been there. Um, but I also know there are so many things that we can do and try. I This past year, I've learned about so many different things that I didn't know about simply from putting out what I'm going through. I think a lot of times we're... Um, embarrassed or there, we have some shame around, you know, our struggles, whether that is, um, you know, chronic pain or, um, weight loss or anything like that. But as soon as I put out like, Hey, this is what I'm going through. Somebody recommended a podcast, um, that was really powerful for me and it helped me find like this new way of being. And so, you know, not being afraid to share what you're going through because I, I yeah. think also support comes from community as well. Like community can be very healing too. Yeah. And I, I think that all of these things that you're talking about really helps us in practical ways to live with more grace and ease and flow, both personally and professionally, like how we show up at work. And again, to not just sort of accept things at face value, question the things that hurt, question the yeah. things that are not right in your life and and having that discernment which we're going to talk about next month uh as a teaser like to make better decisions in the future to jump off that hamster wheel and go huh what could i make one percent better right yeah i love that so if you're curious about Sarah and the work that she does out in the world, her company is called The Coach and Grow Co. And all the links are in the show notes for you guys, especially if you're thinking about becoming a health coach or, or just wanting to get more information from her. Her website is thecoachandgrow.co, C-O. And also we've got all of her links for social media in there as well. Is there one place that you hang out more than others? I love Instagram. Feel mm -hmm. free to send me a DM. Let me know that you listened to this episode, that you what you found helpful. If there's anything that I shared you want to talk about, I'm always on Instagram hanging out. Brilliant. And so her Instagram handle is Sarah with an H underscore Hagstrom. And again, all the links are in the show notes over at thesimplifierspodcast.com. And you have a podcast too called Why Can't I? So tell us more about yes. that. Yeah. So on the podcast, I do a lot of... Um, success stories from health coaches, how they're using their um, knowledge, how they're helping people get healthy in the world. But then mm. I also do a lot of um, like confidence building and clarity. So if you're struggling with confidence, if you're having a hard time getting clear, you need to prune for progress. There's lots of episodes yeah. on that. Brilliant. And you also are giving a freebie to our listeners, the High Vibe Toolkit, 
which again, you guys can find and download over at the simplifierspodcast.com in the show notes. So Sarah, a couple of questions as we wrap up um, that I like to tell ask everyone. So here they go. If you're ready. I'm ready. All right. So first, tell me what's one book or blog you're reading these days that's either inspiring you or poking holes and challenging your belief system? Mm, that's such a good question. So the book that I just finished that was so good, it's called There I Am, The Journey from Hopeless to Healing. Mm-hmm. And it's by an author called, and her name is Ruthie Lindsay. And What I loved about this, it's a memoir, is it's a story of strength and triumph. Mm. And it's a reminder of how strong we are as humans and how we can still go through these difficult times and be kind. Kindness is all throughout her story. And it just is, it's very emotional. If you need a good cry, it's a good one, Mm. but also it will build you up. And for me, I read it and I was like, I just like love humans so much. Yeah. So really good one. Good read. Beautiful. Well, we will link that in the show notes. If you guys are curious about that book, you can find it again at thesimplifierspodcast.com. So tell me, who is one person that you know, somebody you know personally, that you just feel is up to brilliant things? We could shine a spotlight on them. And who knows, maybe one day we'll have them on the podcast. Mm, I love that you do that. So the person that comes to mind is one of my clients, Megan Jones. Mm -hmm. And she runs a business called Wellness on Purpose. And her mission and philosophy is helping people people clean up their eating so they can clean up their life. And it is very um, intentional eating, intentional breathing, um, really just helping you live with more presence. I think that she would be a great guest. Love it. Great. Well, we'll link her in the show notes. If you guys are curious about the work that Megan's doing out in the world, you can find it there as well. So I believe gratitude and simplicity go hand in hand. Tell me what's one thing you're grateful for today? I am so grateful for the sunshine. It is summer Mm -hmm. right now. And I've been doing this new practice where I go outside first thing Mm -hmm. and I just um, look up at the sun, not like directly in it, but just look up and take a moment, feet firmly planted in the grass um, and just feel my breath. And it is just, it, it brings me so much joy. I notice my happiness meter is just increasing being outside. So the sunshine is bringing me so much joy and gratitude right now. Love it. So mm-hmm. someone somewhere is listening to you and I right now, and they're feeling a little bit dim. They're feeling overrun, exhausted, and at the very, very, very bottom of their never-ending to-do list. What's one thing you could whisper into their ear right now just to encourage them in this moment? Mm-hmm. Keep going. You will get through this. Mm, Yeah. Sarah, thank you so much for your time today. Oh, thank you. This is so fun. 